host, Tim Newton. The Purdue football team coming off a win last Saturday over previously unbeaten and 21st-ranked Minnesota, 20-10, to 10, the final score in Minneapolis. Boilermakers now 3-2 and two overall, and they will be back on the road this week to take on the Maryland Terrapins. It'll be another noon kickoff, noon Eastern time, and we'll have our pregame coverage starting at 11 o'clock. Good evening, everybody, from Walk-Ons in West Lafayette and the Purdue Memorial Union. It is the Jeff Brom Show. We'll be talking Boilermaker football with the head coach up until the top of the hour. You can call in at 888-246-2678, or you can tune in tonight on Facebook on the Purdue Athletics page. Let us know where you are, and if you have any questions for the coach, we're also on Twitter tonight on the Purdue football site. Along with the head coach, we'll be talking a little bit later on with Samisi Fakasiecki, a seventh-year linebacker from Compton, California, and offensive lineman Spencer Holstage. We'll have the head coach with us next. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Minnesota's only given up six third-down conversions in four games. O'Connell over the middle, and he converts. Downing up the middle, runs into a roadblock, gets a push into the end zone for a Purdue touchdown. Morgan fakes it to Potts. Here's the pressure from Sullivan, who gets his hand on the pass. It's tipped, and it's picked off by the Boilermakers. And the kick is good. Potts sweeps right. Stiff arm and he's tripped up. That's Jacob Wahlberg. Morgan. End zone. Intercepted off the hands of Brown Stevens. Morgan under pressure and sacked. Branson Dean and Kadron Jenkins in the backfield. O'Connell wants Charlie Jones. He had a step. He makes the catch. Do not blitz Aiden O'Connell. <laughs> Perfect inside 30. And this kick from 25 is good. Now you're in four-minute offense. Can you close out the game? Maccabi cuts a jagged path across midfield. Nobody in front. Can they track him down? Devin Maccabi still going. Takes it inside the five. Hopefully those would turn into big runs for them. Maccabi in for six. Edge pressure. Morgan intercepted. Picked off by Cam Allen. His second of the day. He's still going. And out of bounds inside the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Welcome back to the Jeff Rom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global has Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults for assistance pays off at Purdue Global. And we're joined by Coach Jeff Brom. And Jeff, you were a uh, soothsayer last week. You, you saw the future. You said if you get a lead on this team, you got a chance to take it to the fourth quarter and beat them. And I think that didn't shock anybody. What shocked people was 160 rushing yards for Purdue and 47 for Minnesota, one of the top rushing teams in the country. Really a dominating performance on both sides. Well, let me just first start off the show. Um, and uh, my wife and daughter are here today, so I have to wish my wife a happy birthday. Uh, so she's, uh, she looks a lot younger than me, but she's officially the same age as me today. So uh, I want to definitely <laughs> wish her a happy birthday. But uh, Getting to the game, you know what? Uh, it was important that we get a lead. Uh, we knew that going in. It was it was vital with the type of uh, game that they play, where they're ball control, heavy run oriented, play great defense. So to get off to a good start was important. Um, our defense really played well. Uh, we stopped the run. We disguised uh, a lot more than we had. We kept the ball in front of us. Uh, we really did a, a better job tackling. Not perfect, but a better job tackling. Uh, and we got turnovers. At the same time, the offense was able to score early. Uh, there was a lull there for a while, but then they were able to pick it up towards the end. But I just think our guys really prepared well last week. We were hungry. We knew that we hadn't played uh, as good as we had wanted, and we knew we had a great opportunity against a really good football team 
to go out there and, and make a statement. And uh, so I was very proud of them. They uh, really put in the time and the effort. I thought our coaches, uh, it was one of the better plans we had put together where we really spent a lot of detail changing up a few things here and there. And like I said, I think the disguise is on defense for a team that calls the plays from the sideline and uh, gets lined up in a formation, tries to see what you do, were very beneficial. Uh, and I really just thought it was a good game for us to go on the road and win in that fashion. All right, 888 is our number. We have our first caller in tonight, Drew calling in from Carmel. Go ahead, Drew. Hi, Coach. Congrats on the win today. Can you talk a little more about Devin Maccabee's effort, and do you think he has done enough to own the spot, starting spot? Thanks. Good luck against Maryland. Well, well, thank you, Drew. You sound like a very mature young man and uh, very wise, and uh, your question is a very good one. Um, you know what, uh, Devin uh, really has played very well. Uh, you know, he's a hungry football player. He's out to prove himself. He's really come in here, and he's worked really hard. Uh, he continues to study. He's kind of fearless when he, when he runs with the football. And he's out to prove a point. And those are the type of players you love to coach. Uh, I think that uh, both him and Dylan Dowling actually played very well. Those two guys have really come in here and made great strides over the, the last year. Uh, and we've had to. We've, uh, you know, with King being out for a while, uh, it's a position that uh, – doesn't have as much depth, uh, but you know Kobe Lewis is getting better as well, and uh, we're able to use um, Tyrone Tracy a little bit. But I really, without question, Devin uh, stepped it up in this game, uh, made some big runs for us, and I also thought Dylan Dowling played well. So those two things we have to build on. We've got to make sure we we have balance. And when I say that, it's about scoring points and winning. But uh, you know this team was playing deep, uh, with not giving up the big pass, uh, and uh, we had to you know spread the ball around and, and find a way to run the football. I think you, you mentioned earlier in the week you'd like to call Devin crazy legs because you don't know exactly which direction he's running when he goes down. We saw that on that 68-yard run. He showed a, a, a jump cut and then kind of another cut to the outside. He showed a little bit of speed. I mean, he did get caught from behind, but it took him 60 yards to do that with a little stiff arm added in. Well, that's when I first saw him run. That's just kind of how it looked. You don't really know which direction he's going to go. His knee will point this way. His toe will point the other. His heels go in the other direction, and he's just kind of making cuts. And... Uh, you know, I, I think it's got some natural flexibility uh, and some toughness to go along with it. And uh, he just runs hard. And uh, if you saw him walk through here, you know, dripping wet, he's probably 180 pounds. So I think he continue, can continue to get bigger and stronger over the next couple of years. But, uh, man, he, he just really runs hard, and he's uh, committed to trying to, to be the best player he can possibly be. All right, let's go back to the phone lines. One more call before the next commercial break, and we'll go to Philadelphia with our friend Daryl. Daryl, go ahead. It's not Daryl from Philadelphia. It's Daryl from Indianapolis now. Hence why I missed my call last week, Coach. But uh, just wanted to um, say congratulations on a win. But I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that the whole team is becoming just really fundamentally sound, which is why I'm confident that, you know, uh, we have a really good shot at, um, you know, beating Maryland because I think we just have a more solid defense when they play discipline. But I did have a question. I was just wondering when Brock Thompson was going to come back. Well, if he was going to be available this week. Well, a lot, a lot of good points, Daryl. You always make valid points, and and uh, we have worked really hard um, over the last couple of weeks to really crank up the discipline, uh, limiting penalties, uh, not doing things to beat ourselves, uh, talking about it, uh, watching the mistakes we made, going over how we can correct it, uh, and trying to do it every day in practice so that uh, you know it carries over, and that's been a big part of us playing better. We've got to continue to build on that. You know, we need every advantage we can get, uh, and that's going to be important as we proceed on against really good opponents. And Maryland is going to be, you know, they're, they're probably more athletic uh, than Minnesota, more speed, uh, and they played very, very well to this point. Uh, so we're going to have to be ready to go. When it comes to Brock, you know, Brock uh, obviously had a tremendous bowl game last year uh, while he was injured and uh, had off-season surgery. We were hopeful that we could get him back uh, for the start of the season. His recovery took a little longer than we had hoped. Um, and it was, his knee had just still been bothering him. So uh, he had some touch-up work done this past Friday, which will, will knock him out for a little while. The time frame, I don't know. But he's, st got, he's still got to heal up, and we just got to be hopeful that that works. But uh, he's been through a lot. 
Uh, so I give him a lot of credit. Uh, he's a really good teammate. He wants to be out there, but he just hasn't been 100%. And uh, we're hopeful that at some point he can get out there. All right, we need to take a break. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. The slide again, tipped over, picked up that time by Purdue. Ellis the swing and the kill by Emma Ellis. Purdue has match point. 112 the heart rate, by the way. Raven Colvin serving to win the match. Near the Illinois bench, tied to the net. The roll shot, picked up by Hudson, Balancefer, the dump, Grace Balancefer wins the match for Purdue in incredible fashion, the dump. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open, got him! Touchdown, Purdue! Seth Morales, holy Toledo! Thomas, steps away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope for the year! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, ross Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Boilermakers and the Maryland Terrapins coming up Saturday at noon. Our pregame show starting at 11. We're going to get back to the phone lines in just a minute, but let's get a quick catch up here on who's with us today on Facebook. Hillsdale, Michigan checking in. 12 Mile, Indiana. Lowell and Cumberland, Indiana. Of course, we have Boonville, Indiana, as we expect. Uh, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Marietta, California. And I think that takes us to South Bend, Indiana, coming in tonight as well, as well as Fort Wayne and St. Louis, Missouri. So thanks to all of those folks for tuning in. And, again, if you have any questions for the coach, let us know. We have a questioner on the phone lines. Don is calling in from Indianapolis. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, good evening, Coach. Uh, congratulations on the win, and uh, let's have another one this Saturday. But I have two quick questions. What do you attribute uh, Jacob Wahlberg's improvement in there? And uh, with all the injuries you, you have, what positions are a little bit thin right now as far as depth? Thank you. Well, thanks for the call, Don, and thanks for your support. Uh, you know, on the first point, Jacob Wahlberg has done a really good job for us. I think um, his first couple of years here, he was injured a lot and um, didn't get a chance to play. Uh, right now, Kieran and Douglas, our normal starting middle linebacker, is experiencing some knee issues. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to get him as healthy as we can. So that's thrust him into action. But Jacob's done a really good job. He's got good instincts. Uh, he loves to compete, uh, you know, and he wants to win. So, um, you know, I, I really feel, you know, good about him moving forward. His second question, one uh, more was. Injury, uh, is there a particular um, position you're Yeah, you know about? what? Uh, we're getting thin on the offensive line. That's definitely a concern. Um, you know, we, we lost Garrett Miller at tight end. Uh, that, that is a concern that we've been thin there. Uh, at the linebacker position, there are a few other guys that are nicked up as well, and that's getting very thin. And we've been thin in the secondary. Uh, we're continuing to work to get guys healthy. But uh, you know what? We have a lot of young guys. We've got to continue to develop those guys. At some point, they're going to have to play, and it may be this week or it may be down the road. So it's just uh, an everyday process. Uh, we've got to do the best job we can. Our guys got to be committed to putting in the work, and we got to be scared, not scared to put guys in and play. On the positive side, Jeff, when it comes to injuries, I thought Corey Trice looked a little bit more like Corey Trice than we've seen so far this season. Well, it was the first game without his knee brace, um, and uh, he did. He looked way more fluid and athletic. Uh, we, I even talked to him about it after, and he felt the same way. Uh, but he played well. He did a really, really good job uh, for us to – 
win at a high level, you know, he has to be a dominant player at his position as well as some of the others, but uh, that, that was one of his best games. Uh, well, Cam Allen is a guy that always seems to have a nose for the football. Uh, he was in the right spot to get a deflection uh, in the first half, and then he got a nice uh, center field throw in the, at the end of the game. Ten interceptions on his career, and he has a nose, it seems like, for the football in big situations. Well, I think that's the former quarterback in him. You know, he's a high school quarterback, uh, state championship winner. Uh, so he understands the game a little bit, what quarterbacks are looking at, route design and structure, uh, and he did a good job. Uh, he's gotten better every game. Uh, we were fortunate the first interception, he got beat inside and uh, hit the receiver in the chest and bounced right to him. And then the second one was delivered right to him, but he, but he had really good vision. Uh, he's, he's played really hard. Uh, like I said, we, we did some different things on defense, and he's kind of the quarterback of that secondary, and he had to be in charge of the disguise and getting into proper position after the snap and, and kind of controlling all that. So he studied his, studies it. He cares. Even when we recruited him, he, him and his dad were, man, they were – they were committed to wanting to be great, and it was important to them. And you just liked uh, getting people like that on your team, and I just think he continues to work hard. It was really good to see Mitchell Finner and bounce back after he'd missed a couple of kicks. He booted through a 43-yarder for you early in the game and then nailed that 25-yarder down at the uh, end. Tough angle. Their kicker, who had been outstanding all season, missed one from about the same distance. But uh, it's, it's great to have a guy that you can count on in those clutch situations. Did a great job, and... Uh, you know, everybody can't be perfect. He understands that uh, he hadn't been as good as he would like to be, but he came through in this game big time. And, you know, every, in a game like that, everything matters, uh, but he was sharp. Uh, he was kicking smooth. He kicked it uh, exactly the way he wanted. You could tell when he hit it, it was a solid hit uh, and very accurate. So, once again, his demeanor and his work ethic uh, will continue to, you know, to help him improve every week. All right, we'll be back with the head coach in a couple of minutes. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. It's getting louder as we get to tip off. Let's rock and roll. Listen to this boy with Trevor. They go with Wall the back to Arena. It is better than Fog Out. It is better than Cameron. One of the toughest places in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like, you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena, it's, it's literally the loudest place that I've ever been in my life. You know, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Mona Lisa, a spot in the sand watching the sunset on the Corona Del Mar and a sold out Holloway Gymnasium, the three most beautiful things in the world. And we get to experience one of them right now. Holloway Gymnasium is one of the most electric places in entirely of NCAA Volleyball, so we are so excited to be back. It's always great to see the pride that the Boilermakers bring to the gym and all the support that we get. Oh, double down. This entire Holloway gym right now doubling down and raving. Ellis, the swing and the kill. Emma Ellis coming alive late in set number five. He's taking big swings right now, not afraid of this moment, and the crowd really loves it. Getting the keys out. Middle. Purdue does it. They outlast Utah. Welcome back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Mo Memorial Union. Everyone needs a little playing time. Join us uh, every week here at Walk-Ons. We're on at 6.05 on Wednesday nights throughout the football season. Uh, by the way, I know a lot of our fans tonight, uh, one eye on this show and one eye on the volleyball match right now. Fifth-ranked Purdue taking on Iowa. The Boilermakers leading 19-17 in set one. So we'll keep you posted on that. I know you've got a volleyball-playing daughter here. Yes, yes. She's probably a little interested in that. Yeah, I love volleyball. Uh, we had a couple questions tonight on Facebook about uh, some guys that are in walk-on status right now and if they will be scholarshiped at some point. That's something you take care of in the offseason, isn't it? Yes, you know what uh, – 
you know, with COVID uh, and the ability to kind of guys have an extra year, it's a little more challenging to reach your 85 limit. Uh, so it's something you have to police and manage and it's always changing. But normally, you know, once you start fall camp, you're kind of maxed out. Uh, and when this uh, semester's over, you're able to make some adjustments. So without question, we'll take care of guys that have earned their stripes. And uh, we definitely have a few on our team that have done that. And, and just to let people know, too, the, the, the extension of the 85 scholarship limit was for one season only. Basically, it was for 2021 to give those guys an extra chance. So the problem is you had to get back to your 85 limit for 2022 and beyond. So you need to get a, a decision on these guys pretty quickly about what they're going to do and if they're going to use that extra year. And, and that's why it's still even challenging because, uh, you know, there's guys that have, were here that have that extra year, and you're not for sure if they're coming back or not. Uh, so you got to – communicate with your guys when the season's over and get a feel of what's going on and then just try to, to figure it all out. Uh, let's go back to the game this last week and also the, uh, go back to the Syracuse game. Sean Tucker, one of the best running backs in the country, uh, you were able to shut him down in the game against the Orange this week. Even though Ibrahim was out with an injury, they've still got great offensive line and two pretty good running backs. Uh, what has worked so well for you defensively in stopping the run, especially stopping big running backs? Well, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, you know, we're committed to trying to stop the run. Um, I think our D-line, uh, we have quite a bit of depth, so we're able to rotate, keep guys fresh so that they're out there playing hard, and that's, that's vitally important. Uh, we've been able to, you know, get our safeties down in there with our linebackers and make plays as well and, and kind of map this thing out to, uh, you know, do a good job and prevent the big run. There were a few instances during the – first uh, five games where we, you know, maybe played a little too much man and some things slipped through there. But this past game, I thought we mixed things up uh, really, really well. We had really good disguise, and we did. We, we, we got off blocks better. We, while the tackling wasn't perfect, there were a couple of really, you know, ones I'd like to have back, but we really tackled better. And you know what? Having to lead against a team that wants to run it a lot uh, really put them at a disadvantage, and that's why it was very important. On the offensive side, we weren't sure a week ago what Aiden O'Connell's status would be for Minnesota. He came out, and I, you could see a little bit of rust, but you also saw some courage. He had to take a couple of runs and, and take some hits to make big plays for you in the ball game. Well, you got to give Aiden a lot of credit. Uh, you know, he's going few, through a couple things now, and uh, he was healthy enough in his mind to play and uh, didn't really practice uh, at all last week, but uh, wanted to go out there and tough it out, and he, and he did a really good job. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't his best game by any means but uh, you know he made enough plays he hung in there he tucked it when he had to a few times they were dropping eight into covers quite a bit and he's going to have to just run it some to keep him honest because uh, they were you know doing a good job of covering us at times but uh, I think he'll continue to get better hopefully every week we've got to do a good job of protecting him making sure that uh, we, we work on having balance where he's not getting exposed too much but uh, I just think he's a great teammate and uh, his teammates appreciate him playing. Big players make big plays. Charlie Jones didn't have a lot of yardage on Saturday, but he made the biggest catch of the day in the last drive, the drive that you needed to score on to win. He did, and it was a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and he won it, and uh, he made a really good throw. And uh, Charlie just continues to battle. He, obviously, our quarterbacks are comfortable throwing to him. Uh, you know, he's going to work hard to get open. Uh, and, and they, you know, that was a good defense. The defense had shut people down. They had good corner play. They had good safeties. They had a good design and system, and uh, – you know, he just continued to play hard. And, and while we weren't able to locate him as much, um, you know, we're just going to continue to – we need to continue to spread the thing around and make sure that all of our guys are getting involved. All right, we're going to give the coach a break. When we come back, we'll talk with Samisi Fakasiecki. It is the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome to ESPN College Football. Minnesota is 4-0. Today they'll take on Purdue at Huntington Bank Stadium. This is a great opportunity to show what you're about. You practice all week, all year, your whole life for these opportunities. So there's no reason not to lay it on the line. Are you going to be into the game, locked in and focused, and want to play your tail off every single snap and give it everything you got? Because that's how you win. No other way about it. No other way about it. Paul Pifferi, Devin Mockaby, the true freshman walk on a very impressive opening drive by Purdue. Downing up the middle, runs into a roadblock, 
gets a push into the end zone for a Purdue touchdown. What a drive by the Boilermakers. They're here to play. Like Minnesota on fourth and one will go for it. They are going to run it. And Kramer is stopped. They got to stop. They stopped him inside the 30. Purdue holds wow. on down. And the Boilermakers take over. The snap is down. The kick is on the way. And the kick is good. So the Boilermakers take advantage of the short field and put points on the board. The handoff to Potts, and he's ambushed a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Potts sweeps right, and he's tripped up Jacob Wahlberg, who's had his footprints all over this first quarter. And Purdue's just playing with a little bit more willpower up front, a little more want to. Morgan looking to throw, looks for the end zone, throws it, passes, intercepted! Through the hands of the intended receiver, and Allen picks it off. O'Connell wants Charlie Jones, he had a step, he makes the catch! So Mitchell Finneran will try to put Purdue back on top. Kick is on the way, and the kick is good. Boilermakers take the lead. Mockaby gets the carry on first down, cuts it back, he's got a big hole. 35, still on his feet at the 40, got a first down, he's in the clear. He's at the 45, 40, 35, 30, step on some man, still on his feet, 20, 15, 10, 5, he's down to the three-yard line. An incredible run. Gets the handoff to Mockaby on the left side, touchdown. Touchdown, Devin Mockaby. And the Boilermakers take a two-score lead with 3.13 to play. Morgan throws it down the middle, that pass is intercepted. Cam Allen with the interception, coming back the other way, 30, 40, midfield, down the right sideline, 45, Cam Allen with his second pick of the day, the 10th of his career. Purdue knocks off a ranked team again. Go! That's one of the best wins we've ever had, just telling you. One of the best wins we've ever had. It's a credit to you guys, all right? Every player in this room, all your assistant coaches, that's what it's a credit to. And you shocked the world. No one thought you could win this Nobody, game. You shocked yeah. it. You shocked them, all right? But you know what that means. That means you got to find a way to do it again. Yeah. 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 Do it again. And it's not easy. It's not easy, all right? You got to be as hungry as you were when you lose, all right? You got to be as hungry as you were when you didn't play well to be ready for the next game. Hey, let's go family on three. One, two, three, family. family. Yeah. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Uh, George Karloftis, Kansas City Chiefs first round draft pick, had his first tackle for loss last week in the win over Tampa Bay. Uh, David Bell for the Cleveland Browns had a couple of catches for 35 yards, including a 20 yarder as the Browns lost to Atlanta. Rondale Moore finally got on the uh, field this week after missing the first couple of games due to injury. He had three catches in their win over Carolina. Juwan Bentley with New England had nine tackles, led his team in a loss to Green Bay. And then Anthony Brown with the Dallas Cowboys in their win over Washington had four tackles and forced a fumble for the Cowboys. And before we get to Samisi Fakasiecki, we can tell you Purdue Volleyball wins the first set tonight, 25-23. So we'll keep you posted on that as well. Uh, Samisi coming to us from Compton, California, and uh, you've got one degree in hand, right? Samisi, yes, got your undergrad degree. Yes, sir. Working on a master's? Uh, uh, or working on undergrad. coursework for a master's? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Uh, talk about your game last week, eight tackles against Minnesota. Um, with Minnesota, it was pretty much how much you love the game. Um, uh, Coach Holt, uh, Holt, pretty much every defensive coordinator I had um, – said to me, and it stuck with me a long way, how much you love the game is how far you are away from the ball on the field. So uh, You were at the ball. Mm, you love that, the game. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. So how much you love the game and how much you love everybody on the field with you to, to do your job and not fail, that's pretty much how last game went. Yeah, and, I, and I think with a team like Minnesota, you have a pretty good idea what's coming. You know they're going to run the ball until you stop them. So that, I would think that's the kind of game that you love to suit up for. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, we knew what we had to do was stop the run um, from the beginning, and uh, that's what we did. Uh, I had to get them out of, out of their own game, and that's what, that was our game plan the whole time. So, Macy, it's been a long, strange journey to get you here. You mentioned that you were actually starting uh, your career here in 2016. You were recruited here by Marcus Freeman, who's now the head football coach at Notre Dame. And he said something to you, I think he said something, when I recruit somebody, I don't miss. Yes, That's stuck with you, hasn't it? Yes, sir. Oh, a long time. And uh, it's kind of uh, just helped me push through um, whenever I've had doubts uh, throughout my long career here. And uh, I'm just keep, just keep on pushing. 
Well, the reason that career got a little bit longer is you suffered a season-ending injury last year in training camp. Was there any question that you would come back and play your final year of eligibility? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Um, I talked to Coach Brown. I'm not done with the game. Um, I'm going to play this game for as long as I can, while I can. Um, and if I got the opportunity to play, then I'm going to play. Uh, talk about the rehab. A lot of people, when you, when you have a knee injury like that, I think they've become so commonplace that people think you just snap your finger and get back on the field. But it is a long, grueling process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the ankle, the ankle injury uh, was a devastating one. Uh, but I honestly didn't. I just took that one, and I've also had a knee injury in high school that mm -hmm. I, I suffered, and I kind of learned from that one. So yeah. that when I broke my ankle, I was ready to go right after I, I got surgery. So um, it was straightforward from there. I try to get back on the field as soon as I can. Uh, I just wanted to be with my brothers. When you come back from a big injury like that, the first time you suited up and go full speed, is there any thought, can I do this? Was there any doubt at all in your mind when you hit, when you hit the field? Oh, no. No. Uh, when you get out there on the football field, that adrenaline that just rushes through your body, you forget you're hurt. So, and you love the game so much, you're going to do whatever you got to do to get the job done, regardless if you're hurt or not. Now, we, we see Samisi on the field, and he's a big, tough guy, big linebacker. And I saw a film of you. Um, you played the ukulele since you were in middle school. How in the world did you get hooked up with the ukulele? Um, so I have a big family. Uh, my cousin, one of my very many cousins, is the musically talented one in the family. And he could play anything from guitar to piano to violin, anything. Like, he heard it, he could play it. And uh, the rest of us cousins picked up something from him, and I picked up the ukulele from him. And then from there, it's, it's been a pretty good hobby. You still pick it up once in a while? Oh, yeah, yeah. Every time I go home, you know, we're jamming, jam sessions. <laughs> so did, so did he teach you that, or did, were you self to, did you teach yourself how to play? Oh, no, he teaches us. Okay. Uh, I couldn't. No, I, I'm impatient, so. <laughs> what, what kind of music do you both listen to, and then what, what do you play on the ukulele? Um, a lot of reggae music, so uh, um, Polynesian music, so like people from like Spawn Breezy, Jay Bug. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it out here. but uh, They can Google it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, well, you made some sweet music on Saturday against the Gophers. Let's see some more of the rest of the season. Congratulations on coming back. Great to have you back for another season. Thank and let's finish this back. great last season with a flourish. Yes, sir. All right, Samisi Fakasiecki joining us. We'll talk to Spencer Holstage coming up next. It is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Minnesota's only given up six third down conversions in four games. O'Connell over the middle, and he converts. Downing up the middle, runs into a roadblock, gets a push into the end zone for a Purdue touchdown. Morgan fakes it to Potts. Here's the pressure from Sullivan, who gets his hand on the pass. It's tipped, and it's picked off by the Boilermakers. And the kick is good. Potts sweeps right. Stiff arm and he's tripped up. That's Jacob Wahlberg. Morgan. End zone. Intercepted off the hands of Brown Stevens. Morgan under pressure and sacked. Branson Dean and Kadron Jenkins in the backfield. O'Connell wants Charlie Jones. He had a step. He makes the catch. Do not blitz Aiden O'Connell. Perfect inside 30. And this kick from 25 is good. Now you're in four-minute offense. Can you close out the game? Maccabi cuts a jagged path across midfield. Nobody in front. Can they track him down? Devin Maccabi still going. Takes it inside the five. Hopefully those would turn into big runs for them. Maccabi in for six. Edge pressure. Morgan intercepted. Picked off by Cam Allen. His second of the day. He's still going. And out of bounds inside the 40-yard line of Minnesota. 
Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Quick check before we get to Spencer Holstead here. Ferdinand, Indiana, checking in tonight on Facebook. Greenwood and Cicero, Indiana. Uh, Swamico, Wisconsin with us. Charlotte, North Carolina. Platte City, Missouri, just outside Kansas City. Uh, O'Fallon, Illinois, just outside St. Louis. And Danville, Kentucky. And they are uh, tuned in to hear Spencer Holstage, a junior offensive lineman from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Also has his undergraduate degree, as does Samisi. And you're working on an online MBA, right? Correct. Uh, well, let's, let's flip this around and talk about post-football first, then. What, uh, when football is done, whenever that is, what do you plan to do with your two Purdue degrees? Well, my undergrad allows me to go into any field, so i um, looking to u- utilize that as well as the online MBA. So I have options, but I don't know for sure what I will plan to do with them. Uh, Spencer, I think a lot of people may have been pleasantly surprised to see the Boilermakers run the ball for 160 yards against Minnesota. It's a, it's a team that had not given up much yardage on the ground. I would think for an offensive lineman, a game like Saturday had to be a dream when both things were working, both the run and the pass. Correct. It allows us to do both. And um, even with FAU, we were able to run the ball. And, um, yeah, it's coming together, and we hope to keep it going. Run blocking was something you talked about before the season. You really worked on trying to get stronger. What's the biggest key to being a good run blocker? Biggest thing is to always run your feet and um, being able to stay low so you're able to um, utilize uh, your leverage and to be able to move them out. Uh, we talked with Samisi in the last segment about persistence and the fact that he's been here for seven years, and it really is an amazing story of, of you being here because – uh, people may not know, when you were about a month old, you were diagnosed with meningitis and given a 50-50 chance for survival. Uh, what, what did that do, or did that change the way when you grew up? Did that change your outlook at all? I, it certainly was before you could remember, but the, the fact that you were still around, what, what, how did that change you? Yeah, I mean, it uh, allows me to be here today, and um, yeah, I mean, I utilize that by saying that I got a second chance at life, and um, um, utilize that every way I can. Uh, you have an, an, a nickname. I believe you're called the Milkman on the team. You know this is going to come up. You, you have never, you, all you've had to drink in your life, right, is milk and water. Correct. No chocolate, no sweets, nope. no soda. Why? Uh, because of my meningitis, we think that my taste buds were messed up when I was young, so that's why I'm, uh, I'm a picky eater and I don't eat a lot and I only eat certain foods and drink certain things. Now, an offensive lineman has to maintain, though, a certain mass. So when you say, yeah, I don't eat much, you've got to eat enough to keep that, that frame filled out, right? Yeah, correct. I have my own way of eating. I eat a lot of protein, so it allows me to be able to gain weight as well as keep on the weight. Uh, I, I, I saw that your mom said in a, in a story that uh, when you were a, a kid and they threw uh, can- there was a parade and they threw candy into the crowd, you threw it back. Correct. Yeah, I mean, and I'm sure like the kids candy. around you weren't very happy about that. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> well, you can't. You, you don't miss what you don't know, right? Yep. Uh, the guy next to you on the offensive line, uh, Eric Miller, was with us earlier this season, and he says he's the best baker on the team, and he says chocolate chip cookies is his specialty. So I got to believe chocolate chip cookies next to milk. That's got to be a winning combination, right? Got to be. Have you, have, have you been able to sample? Now, you, you don't eat the chocolate chip cookies, all right? Correct, I don't. So you have to take everybody's word for it that they're pretty good. Yeah, apparently. Uh, talk about your goals for the rest of the season, try, obviously trying to win. But uh, personally, what would you, wh- when you go into a game every week, do you, are there certain things that you need to achieve personally? For me, it's just continue to get better each week, um, especially on the run blocking. My pass blocking, I feel, has gotten a lot better. And... Um, yeah, especially on the run block because we've gotten better each week and continuing to grow on that uh, will allow our offense to continue to, to get better. Yeah, one thing I appreciate about you is your individuality. A lot of your offensive line mates shaved their heads this year in training camp, and you kept your full head of hair, and I congratulate you on that, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Never a doubt, was there? No. no. <laughs> yeah, some of us need our hair, right? Uh, correct. Uh, congratulations again, Spencer, on an outstanding game last week and a great season so far, and let's keep it going as the second half of the season unfolds. Yes, sir. Thank All you. All right, we'll get the head coach back with us next. It's Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield.
The slide again, tipped over, picked up that time by Purdue. Ellis the swing, in the kill by Emma Ellis. Purdue has match point. 112, the heart rate, by the way. Raven Colvin serving to win the match. Near the Illinois bench, tied to the net. The roll shot, picked up by Hudson, Balancefer, the dump, Grace Balancefer wins the match for Purdue in incredible fashion, the dump. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open, got him! Touchdown, Purdue! Seth Morales, holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope for the year! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. The Roman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as a presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Roman Automotive Group, boil them up and hammer, hammer down. Uh, volleyball teams uh, got a handful tonight. Uh, they beat Iowa in the first set 25-23, but Iowa leads set 2 15-7. So it looks like uh, Dave Shondell and company may have to go a little longer than usual tonight, but I, we have full faith in the Boilermakers to pull through. Uh, you've got your hands full on Saturday. We talked a little bit about Maryland earlier in the show, but this might be the fastest team that you play. Certainly one of the fastest teams you're going to play all season. I think so. They've got really good team speed. Uh, you know, they're sitting at 4-1. and one. Their only loss is at Michigan, where not until the very end of the first half did Michigan bust a fourth and run, one run for a touchdown. Maryland had the lead, and then really it was a three-point game until late in the fourth quarter uh, when they busted another long run on a short yardage situation. But uh, this team's playing well. Uh, they got an experienced quarterback uh, that uh, can move around, make plays. He's accurate. They've got some really good skill receivers. Their defense is playing better than it had in the last couple years, uh, and it's a solid football team. So anytime you go on the road and you play a team that's hot, you've you've got to figure them out and uh, figure out a way to, to get a win. It's going to be an extremely challenging game, and we're going to have to really do a lot of things correctly and play hard for the entire 60 minutes and just try to hang in there like all these Big Ten games and get it in the fourth quarter and see if we can find a way to win. You mentioned their quarterback, uh, Talia Tunga Valoa, whose brother Tua is a quarterback in the NFL with the Miami Dolphins, and, and he's a dual threat guy. And, and they're, at times this year, running quarterbacks have presented a challenge for you. Well, it's tough. You know, he's played a lot. He's had a, he has a ton of experience, so he kind of gets it and understands it. And when things aren't there, he has the ability to create plays with his feet. And that's what creates problems. Uh, you know, you can design a good defense and be in good position, but if he scrambles and buys extra time, then things get out of whack. So it's, it's, it's challenging. Uh, we've got to figure out a way to create enough pressure, uh, get a couple turnovers if we can, uh, not give up the big play, and then once again, you know, try to somehow get a lead in this game. We saw this team in ross Aid Stadium three years ago, and Purdue won that game 40-14, to 14, but it sounds like defensively they're a much different team and a much different scheme than they ran at that point. Yes, you know what, I think the, their quarterback play in that game was not very good, uh, and now they have a real quarterback uh, that always is going to make things more challenging, and their defense is playing better. And uh, I just think they've learned over the years uh, what they need to get better at. They, they have better players than uh, I thought uh, than three years ago. They're just a better overall team. And uh, this is a team that can contend in, in that side of the bracket, in my opinion, and uh, they've proven that. Anytime you go into Michigan, and have a chance to win the fourth quarter, you're, you're playing really good football. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those games that we've got to 
get up for, make sure we have a great week of practice, and make sure we come ready to play. I, I certainly you're not looking past Maryland, but I, just, I saw a quirk on the schedule that I'm, I'm sure has never happened per, before in Purdue football history, and that is the next two weeks you're going to be playing teams with interim coaches. Uh, cha- coaching change at Nebraska, coaching change at Wisconsin, and I think the one up in Madison shocked everybody a little bit. Paul Chris was 40 games over 500. You were asked about it in your press conference earlier this week, and, and it, it seems to be the nature of the beast these days in college football. Well, you know, you personally feel bad for those guys uh, because you understand how hard they work at it, how much it means to them, and sometimes it just doesn't work, and uh, that doesn't mean they didn't do a, a good job. You know, the difference in winning and losing is so small that uh, you've just got to put in the time. You've got to really work at it. You have to have answers and solutions, and like I've told people before, that's why I really don't have hobbies anymore. I've got to make sure that I'm doing my part as a head coach, and, and that means less, less – off-season time away. No, you've got to study it. You've got to study other teams. You've got to study your conference. You've got to make sure you, uh, you have answers for your team. And uh, that's what creates, um, you know, a little more stress. Uh, but that's the nature of college football. And, uh, you know, but all those guys are, are, are good people. Um, you know, both Nebraska and Wisconsin are talented football teams. Every time we play Nebraska and we take the field, I mean, they look like giants uh, when we go on the field. I'm like, man, that's, these are some good-looking guys. Uh, so I know they're going to play good football. When you look at Wisconsin, they, they've been playing good football, and uh, we haven't beaten them since I've been here. And uh, they're really, really good on defense. They have big offensive linemen, and uh, you know they had a. You know, when you play Ohio State early on, that's a tough one to win. Uh, so I just think the schedule was tough for them early on. Now they're going to get into some other teams, uh, and I think they're they can easily you know win a lot of football games. So those are just two really good football teams, no matter what's going on uh, at at those places, and. Uh, you know, we're just trying to do our part. So all you can do as a head coach is put your head down, go to work, do the best job you can, go out there, compete, and lay it on the line. Well, first things first, next on the schedule is Maryland, and we'll have final comments on our final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Toughest place in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Uh, Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena is it's literally the loudest place uh, I've ever been in my life. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Mona Lisa, a spot in the sand watching the sunset on the Corona Del Mar and a sold out Holloway gymnasium, the three most beautiful things in the world. And we get to experience one of them right now. Holloway Gymnasium is one of the most electric places in entire league of NCAA volleyball, so we are so excited to be back. It's always great to see the pride that the Boilermakers bring to the gym and all the support that we get. Oh, double down. This entire Holloway gym right now doubling down and raving. Ellis, the swing and a kill. Emma Ellis coming alive late in set number five. Taking big swings right now, not afraid of this moment. The crowd really loves it. Getting the keys out. Middle. Who does it? They outlast. Boilermakers and the Maryland Terrapins coming up at noon on Saturday. We'll have that one starting at 11. If you missed it, next week's home game against Nebraska will be a night kickoff, 7.30 kickoff. And so, Jeff, we're going to have to figure out a way to fill a whole day before we play football again. But, you know, the fans will show out. We know that. And and we've only got three home games left, so we're excited to get back home after we can hopefully get a win in, on Maryland on Saturday. Yeah, without question, it's fun to play at home, and our fans have been off the charts. And, uh, you know, that just shows the power of college football. It's a, it's a great game. Uh, it brings out uh, 
a great afternoon of fun uh, for everybody. Uh, obviously, when you win, it's even more fun. But, uh, you know, it's a competitive uh, conference, a lot of good football teams. And, uh, you know, on every, any given Saturday, anybody can win. And that's what makes it a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to not only this week, but getting back home as well. You know, there is no better sight than a football team or a basketball team, whatever sport you play, when you're on the road and you see those fans filing out in the fourth quarter. Uh, that's the greatest feeling in the world. You got to you got to experience that on Saturday in Minnesota. It was a good feeling. You know, we have not won in that stadium, and uh, Minnesota's done a good job against us. Uh, so to come in there when they were really hot and find a way to pull off the upset, it, it is a great feeling. You know, it's one of those you like to just uh, let it linger for a little bit, but unfortunately, you got to <laughs> move on to the to the next opponent and, and get ready to go because uh, you know, in, in today's age of college football, every week's a new challenge, and if you're not gonna, you know put your head down and go to work and try to figure it out, uh, you're going to have a hard time winning. Jeff, your teams have had great success on the road, particularly in the last couple of seasons. What do you attribute that to? Well, you know, I think we have a good balance uh, of making sure our team understands that everything's a one-game season, and really whether you win or lose that week, you need to win again. And uh, so there's no reason to get too high or too low. Uh, Sometimes after wins, you can start to feel good about yourselves and not work as hard. The next week's a bad week. Sometimes when you lose, you're – you get angry enough and uh, you get ticked off enough you're, you're, and you're willing to put into work, you're going to have a better chance to win. So I just think we understand that, uh, you know, any given week in this conference, anybody can win if you're willing to, to, to put in the work, if you're willing to lay it on the line, if you're willing to play loose. So we try to kind of narrow it down as the week goes on, like, hey, let's, let's put in the best work we can, uh, be able to look in the mirror Saturday morning and say, you know what, I did about everything I could to get ready for this game. And then come game day, we just cut it loose, and we let the pieces fall where they may. Uh, we don't second-guess anything, anything, and we go for it. I just think our guys have done a good job of that. Is it hard to be consistent with it every week? Yes, it is, but you just got to do the best job you can. A couple of notes here. Uh, I think we mentioned earlier Cam Allen is the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week, and Charlie Jones today was added to the Bolitnikoff watch list, and he continues to amaze. Again, not a lot of yardage on Saturday, but big catches when you needed them. Both, both guys are doing a really good job and really good leaders for our team. Well, Jeff, it should be a great day for football. We're looking at temperatures somewhere in the mid-50s on Saturday in uh, College Park, and it should be a great afternoon. Hopefully we can come back with another win. Good luck this week. Okay, thank you. All right, the Boilermakers again to the road this week, taking on the Maryland Terrapins at CQ Stadium. That was just recently renamed. CQ Stadium will be the site. It'll be a noon kickoff. We'll have that broadcast starting at 11. And then again, Purdue coming home to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. That game on October 15th will kick off at 7.30. Boilermakers will travel to Wisconsin the following week, and then they have their bye week the last week in October. Thanks tonight to our engineer, Wes Scott, and to our producer, Jacob Smith. Thanks also to Hunter Massengill for providing the video for us this evening. Again, the Boilermakers on the road this week, but we'll be back here at Walk-Ons next Wednesday night at 6.05. Again, thanks to the head coach, and thanks to Samisi Fakasiecki and Spencer Holstage, and happy birthday again to Jennifer Brom. For our entire crew, this is Tim Newton. We'll see you next week right here at Walk-Ons. Good night, everybody.